We get a lot of questions, so I'm having to do it. A follow-up on the field skillet. Is it really that good? Stick around, you're gonna find out. Now I'm getting a lot of questions on YouTube to do a follow-up. How is that field skillet working out? Maybe two months ago, something like that, we got this box in the mail. We did an unboxing video on an eight inch field skillet. Now I was a little skeptical when I first heard this was coming because I'm old fashioned. I like the old iron, what it was, how it was made. When I started looking into cast iron and places that I could get more cast iron that was quality, I looked on that thing Shannon calls the Google for cast iron made in the United States. Now there's more than you think, but some of them companies might not make it correctly the way I think it ought to be made. I think it ought to be milled to that old finish that the stuff had so many years ago. I did a little homework on these people. Then I sent them an email. Said, hey, you know, I'd like to maybe try some of this cast iron. Number one thing I liked about it when I pulled it out of the box was the weight. But also when I looked down at it, I seen the thickness of the walls. It reminded me so much of an old Griswold or an old piece of Wagner ware. But when I run my hand across it, it was the smooth finish. You're not gonna find that on a lot of iron anymore. You go to the store and you buy some, it feels like gritty pavement. They had on their little list of their things that maybe you shouldn't do to it right off the bat. And one of them was fry meat. Well, I've always been a firm believer when I'm starting out a piece of cast iron, I'm gonna fry something in it pretty quick, whether it be bacon or potatoes. So I fried me some bacon in there without doing a thing to it. I just washed it out good with hot water, dried it, put that bacon in there. There wasn't no sticking. It wasn't like it had been in some of them other ovens where I'd had to get the putty knife, a chisel, and a hammer to knock it off there. No, it was good. So I got that out of there, wiped it all out, cleaned it up just a tad, got it hot again. What did I put in there? A scrambled egg. And folks, I was amazed. There was no sticking like them egg whites will do to stuff to where you can't even get them out of there. The more you use it, the better it is gonna to become to you. The slicker it's gonna get, the better finish it has. Now, what I have found that really helps these new skillets a whole lot, deep fry you something in them. Pour you enough grease in there that you can fry something. I cook me some deep fried chili rellenos in them. I'll deep fry some fish in them, deep fry some potatoes in them. It really works good on seasoning. Easy to clean up that away, but it's building that seasoning process up even more because you're at a temperature of 350 degrees most of the time when you're frying, and that oil is giving the point to just sit in there and just soak and re-soak take a hold of that season. I've noticed in these field skillets too, uh, that they finish a little different than say that other stuff that I had. I, I'm, I won't say it's slower, but it comes out looking a little different than anything I'd ever seen. I won't say it's spotted, but I'll call it a little lacy. Is that a bad thing? No, not that it's not seasoned there. It's just the way that it's accepting the seasoning. That will build in, that will fill in gradually over time. I've been using this skillet for a month and a half every day. Is it solid black everywhere? No, it's got some bronze coating to it, a little spotted in color, a little motley color. They finish quicker and smoother than any of that other iron I ever used unless you get back to the Griswold and the Wagner so many years ago. Now I started this out with flaxseed oil. They recommend grapeseed oil. Flaxseed oil to me bonds really well to cast iron. People are gonna say, well, Olive oil has a low burn point. I'm not trying to burn my seasoning on there. I'm trying to let it accept the seasoning that I put on it. I'm sort of a slow and go guy. That's why I really love the olive oil. Now, you can use bacon grease. I ain't telling you you can't. You can use lard, but make sure you just use a little. Go back to that video we had about how was come was my cast iron sticking. It don't take much to re-season a skillet. I'm just telling you, a little dab will do you, sort of like that Brill Cream commercial. But if you're using bacon grease or a lard, make sure that you use it nearly every day. Because if you put a lid on this and seal it up and you don't cook in it for two or three or four days, sometimes you will begin to get a rancid smell due to that bacon grease or that lard because you're not using it every day and it's not properly ventilated. When we did our unboxing video, they sent us an eight. I love the skillet, I do. But I'm gonna tell you what they done went and done. They don't went and went to making a 10 inch skillet. Now I've had this about a week and I love this rascal. Wherever you get your good cast iron, look for that good milled finish. But remember, 
the seasoning process is not a one-time deal. I get a lot of comments on YouTube, well, that's just too much work. It ain't no work to it. This skillet pays dividends every day that I cook into it because number one, we're getting to absorb iron. Number two, Shannon and the Beagle's really happy because I didn't burn nothing. There are some companies out there that are making good quality cast iron in the United States the old fashioned way. I want to thank you for stopping by. It has been a pleasure. It is a great day above the grass here in Southwest Oklahoma. It is very beautiful. We don't take it for granted that you stop by and watch these things. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Hit the subscribe button. God bless you. YouTube videos have been good to us and this little woman is what makes it happen. She's a great producer, a great editor and y'all think y'all get tired of seeing me? She gets tired of seeing me even more time she looks at and it I'm on the computer. I'm tired of editing. Oh, I, I promise you. Hey folks, as you can see. Huh. So what do you <laughs> A lot. He actually says it more than you than I show in the video. I clip it out a lot. So the good folks at YouTube when we reached 100,000 subscribers they sent us a, an award. You've just done something that very few YouTube creators accomplish. You had an astonishing 100,000 people subscribe to your channel. You achieved this milestone with hard work, perseverance, and probably a healthy sense of humor, too. What you've accomplished can't be taken away from you, and we'd like to recognize you and all your work with this Silver Creator Award, a small token of our esteem and respect. Thanks, YouTube! Yes! We know that you don't do this for rewards. You do it because you have a drive to create and share, and because you found an audience who cares. That is very that is true. true. You do have. I have a great audience. Really good subscribers. Uh, I've got people on there that if they don't comment for too long, I get, get to worried you about, get worried about them. them. Yeah. Believe us when we say we can't wait to see what you do next. A million subscribers may seem like a long way off, but you're closer than you think, and we're rooting for you. A, a million subscribers is the next award, I believe. Got a favor to ask you people. Now tell, I know. Tell a, tell a million of your closest friends. <laughs> Invite about a million people over for the Super Bowl party and tell them to subscribe. So. Oh my oh gosh, gosh, your name is, is your name on it? Uh-huh. This is very <gasps> nice. Sweet. That is so cool. Oh, this is very, Cowboy very Kent nice. Rollins. Once again, my name is not on it. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube has been the platform for us to reach everybody. Yeah. So we welcome you into our camp and we love being in your homes. And it's very cool. None of it would ever been possible without y'all watching. So we, like I say, we don't ever take it for granted. We appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, we hope you learned something. We hope you have a good time. And uh, I'll say it one more time. I promise you we'll have some more videos <laughs> coming out. Edit. <laughs> yeah.